Hello students, how are you? I hope all of you are fine. Welcome in my class. I am Pregna Seth, Assistant Teacher in Government High School, Jainagar, Shamshabad, Agra. Dear students, in this class we will study about parts of a speech in English grammar. This is the third part of this topic. Till now, we have studied about nouns, pronouns and their kinds. And I hope students, you have no doubts regarding this. In this class, we will study about adjective and its kinds. Verb and its kinds. Adverb and its kinds. So, let's start studying about adjective. Dear students, before moving on to adjective, I would like to ask you the meaning of word add. Yes students, add means to add something or to tell more about. So the words that tell us more about a noun or a pronoun are called adjectives. So let us read the definition of adjective. An adjective modifies a noun. Let us understand this with the help of these examples. That is a huge cake. In this sentence, huge is a word which is qualifying cake. So, cake is a noun. So, we can say that huge is an example of adjective. It was a very hot day. In this sentence, hot is a describing word and it is describing about day. And day is a noun. I will have two kites. In this sentence, two is describing about kites. And kites is a noun. So we can say that huge, hot and two are examples of adjective. When adjectives are used before a noun, they are called attributed adjectives. Let us understand with the help of this example. She is an intelligent girl. Here word intelligent has been used before word girl. And girl is a noun. So we can say that intelligent is an example of attributive adjective. When adjectives are used after a word, they are called predicative adjectives. For example, Mahima feels sick. In this sentence, sick has been used after verb feels. So, it is an example of predicative adjective. So, let us learn more about kinds of adjective. There are different kinds of adjectives. Adjectives of quality. Dear students, what is the meaning of quality? Yes, quality means characteristics. So students, words that tell us about the quality of a noun or a pronoun are called adjectives of quality. So an adjective that describes the quality of a noun is called adjective of quality. Let us read these examples. She is a beautiful lady. Beautiful is a word that describes the quality of lady. She cooked me a tasty lunch. Tasty is a word that describes the quality of lunch. So we can say that these are examples of adjectives of quality. Adjectives of quantity. Here students, don't get confused. There is a difference between quality and quantity. As I already told you, quality means characteristics and quantity means amount. Although it does not give us a number, yet it tells us about the amount of a noun or a pronoun. So, an adjective that helps us to show the amount of a noun or a pronoun is called an adjective of quantity. Let us read these examples. Would you like some sugar in your coffee? I have enough money to help you. In these examples, you can see that some and enough are the words.
words that are describing about the amount of a noun or a pronoun. So they are the examples of adjectives of quantity. Let's move forward. Distributive adjectives. An adjective that expresses the distributive state of nouns is called a distributive adjective. For example, neither house is big enough. Every student has adopted a pet. So students, there are four distributive adjectives and these are each, every, either and neither. They are used with singular nouns and singular verbs. I hope students you have understood distributive adjectives. Now come to the next kind of type of adjectives and they are interrogative adjectives. What interrogative means? To ask a question. So as its name suggests an adjective that helps to ask a question is called an interrogative adjective. For example, which book do you want to read? Whose house is this? Here students, I would like to tell you one thing. If these interrogative words are followed by nouns, only then they are called interrogative adjectives. Adjectives of number. Dear students, these adjectives not only tell us about the number of noun or pronouns, but they also tell us about the position of noun or pronouns. So, let us read the definition of adjectives of number. An adjective that shows how many people or things are being referred to or tells us their Order in a series is called an adjective of number. For example, today is the first day of April. In this sentence, first is a word that shows the position of day. Seven days make a week. Seven is a number. So, these are examples of adjectives of number. Let us talk about Demonstrative adjectives. An adjective that helps to point at people or things is called a demonstrative adjective. Let us understand with the help of these examples. That building is a museum. Those flowers are very tall. So students hear words like that and those are examples of demonstrative adjectives. Words like this, that, these, those are examples of demonstrative adjectives. Here students, I would like to tell you a difference between demonstrative adjective and demonstrative pronoun. So, let us have a look at it. Demonstrative adjectives are followed by nouns, while demonstrative pronouns are not. Let's see these sentences. This car is very fast. Students, in this sentence, word this has been followed by a word car. And car is a noun. So here, this is an example of demonstrative adjective. This is a fast car. In this sentence, students, this is alone over here. It has not been followed by a noun. So, it is an example of demonstrative pronoun. Let's move ahead and talk about possessive adjectives. An adjective that helps to identify possession is called a possessive adjective. For example, have you met their pet? This is my room. So, students in these sentences, their and my are the words that show possession. So we can say that these are examples of possessive adjectives. Possessive adjectives are followed by nouns, while possessive pronouns are not. Let us understand this difference between possessive pronoun and possessive adjective 
with the help of these examples. This is my car. Here, my has been followed by a noun that is car. So, here my is an example of possessive adjective. Why this car is mine? In this sentence, mine is not followed by a noun. So, it is an example of possessive pronoun. Let us talk about degrees of comparison. Adjectives can be used to make comparisons between two or more people or things. I hope students, you must be familiar with the degrees of adjectives. Yes students, there are three degrees of adjectives and these are Positive degree, comparative degree and superlative degree. Let's talk about them one by one. Positive degree. When we talk of one person or thing, we use the positive degree. For example, Rohan is a tall boy. Here, tall is a word that is talking about the quality of Rohan. So, it is an example of positive degree. Comparative degree. As its name suggests that there is a comparison. So students, when we compare two people or things, we use the comparative degree. For example, Sahil is taller than Roman. In this sentence, there is a comparison between two persons and they are Sahil and Rohan. So, taller is a word that shows the comparison between Sahil and Rohan. So, it is an example of comparative degree. Let's talk about superlative degree. When we compare three or more people or things, we use the superlative degree. For example, Riaz is the tallest boy in the class. Here word tallest shows the comparison of Riaz among all the boys in the class. So it is an example of superlative degree. I hope students now you are able to understand these three degrees of adjective. Students here are some sentences. Identify the adjectives and their kind. So, let's start. Today is a beautiful day. Yes, students. In this sentence, beautiful is an example of adjective of quality. As it describes about the quality of day. How is the day? Day is beautiful. So, we can say that beautiful is an example of adjective of quality. Now, let's move forward. There is some milk in the jug. Yes students, some is a word that describes about the quantity of milk. So, it is an example of adjective of quantity. Those flowers have withered. Yes students, those is a word that has been used to point at flowers. So, it is an example of demonstrative adjective. Either of them can go, but not both. Yes, students, either is an example of distributive adjective. Stand aside, let these people pass. Yes, students, these is a word used to point at people. So, this is an example of demonstrative adjective. There are 12 months in a year. Yes, students, 12 is a number. So, it is an example of adjective of number. Have you got your price? Yes, word your shows possession. So, it is an example of possessive adjective. I hope students, you are able to understand adjectives and their kinds. Let's talk about work. Dear students, people often get confused that only action words are called verbs. But students, words that tell us about being and possession of a subject are also called verbs. 
So let us read the definition of verb. A verb tells us what someone does, is or has. Let us read some of the examples. Mary Kong won the boxing match. In this sentence, one shows the action of subject. So, it is an example of verb. Sushant is intelligent. Here, is shows being of a subject. So, it is an example of verb. Joe has short hair. Has shows possession. So, it is also an example of verb. Let's move ahead and talk about different categories of verbs. These are principal and auxiliary verbs, transitive and intransitive verbs, finite and non-finite verbs. Let's talk about principal and auxiliary verbs. Here is a table students that will help you to understand the difference between Principal verbs and auxiliary verbs. Let's see. These verbs can stand alone. For example, the puppy is naughty. He wrote a letter. She arrived at 10 a.m. They have a big house. In these sentences, students, you can see that these verbs do not need any kind of support. They act as a main verb in these sentences. So, they are examples of principal verbs. Auxiliary verbs. These verbs cannot stand alone. There are two kinds of auxiliary verbs. Primary auxiliaries and modal auxiliaries. Let us understand with the help of these examples. The dog is barking. Dear students, as you can see, that in the sentence is has been used as a helping verb as it needs the support of main verb barking. So here is, is an example of auxiliary verb. He is writing a letter. She will come at 10 a.m. In these sentences is and will are example of auxiliary verbs. Let's move ahead and talk about another category of verbs that is transitive and intransitive verbs. So let's talk about transitive verbs first. Verbs that require an object to complete the meaning are called transitive verbs. Let us read these examples. He wrote a letter. She sang a song. Mother pushed the trolley. Dear students, as you can see that in these sentences, these verbs wrote, sang, pushed, need the support of an object. So, they are called transitive verbs. In transitive verb, verbs that do not require an object to complete the meaning are called intransitive verbs. You can see with the help of these examples, they run. Birds fly, the baby sleeps. So students, you can see that these verbs do not need the support of an object. They do not need an object to complete their meaning. So they are examples of intransitive verbs. Let's talk about finite and non-finite verbs. A word that has a subject and exhibit tense and number in a sentence is called a finite verb. As you can understand with the help of these examples. Mother was watching television. I have won the match. In these sentences students, was watching and have won are examples of finite verbs. As they follow the tense and number in a sentence. Let's talk about non-finite verbs. A word that neither has a subject nor exhibits tense and number in a sentence is called a non-finite verb. Students, there are three kinds of non-finite verbs. These are gerund, participle and infinitive. Let's see with the help of these examples. 
The cricketers like to play fair. Walking is a good exercise. Here, to play is an example of infinitive and walking is an example of gerund. So, we can say that these are examples of non-finite verbs. I hope students, you are able to understand these categories of verbs. State whether the highlighted verbs are transitive and intransitive. So, let's start. I played all evening. Yes, students, played is an example of intransitive Work, as it does not require an object to complete its meaning. I admire him. Yes, students, admire is a kind of transitive verb. Why? As it needs an object to complete its meaning. So, here is an object him that is supporting verb admire. We clean our garden every day. Yes, students, this is again an example of transitive verb as it requires an object. I laughed. Yes, students, it is an example of intransitive verb as it does not require an object. My dog barked. Yes, students, it is an example of intransitive verb. I hope, students, you are able to differentiate between transitive and intransitive Words. Let's talk about adverb. We have already discussed the meaning of add. Add means to add something or to tell us more about. So adverbs are words that tell us more about words. So let us read the definition of adverb. An adverb is a word that tells us more about an adjective, a verb or another adverb. It adds to the meaning of the verb. Adverbs often tell when, where, why or under what conditions something happens or the frequency at which an action happens. For example, Ramesh played the guitar beautifully. How did Ramesh play? Ramesh played beautifully. So, beautifully is a describing word. It describes about word. So, it is an example of adverb. Let us meet outside. Where do we meet? Outside. So, outside is an example of adverb. He went upstairs. Where did he go? He went upstairs. So, upstairs is an example of adverb. There are different kinds of adverbs. Let's talk about them one by one. Adverbs of manner. An adverb that tells us about the manner in which an action takes place is called an adverb of manner. For example, the princess and the prince lived happily. How did they live? They lived happily. They welcomed us warmly. How did they welcome? Warmly. So, happily and warmly are words that tell us about the manner. So, they are examples of adverbs of manner. Let's talk about adverbs of time. So students, as its name suggests that the words that tell us about the time in which an action takes place are called adverbs of time. Let us read these examples. He came yesterday. When did he come? He came yesterday. Call him now. So yesterday and now are words that tell us about Time of an action. So, these words are examples of adverbs of time. Adverbs of place. An adverb that tells us about the place in which an action takes place is called an adverb of place. Let us understand with the help of these examples. 
we are meeting outside they live somewhere in mayur bihar so students here outside and somewhere are the words that tell us about the place where action occurs so these are examples of adverbs of place let's talk about adverbs of frequency an adverb that tells us how often an action occurs is called an adverb of frequency for example i meet her daily he always helps me so students you can see that in these sentences daily and always are the words that tell us about the frequency of an action so they are examples of adverbs of frequency adverbs of degree an adverb that tells us the level or extent to which something happens is called an adverb of degree let us read some of the examples her work is almost over jaya is very beautiful dad was rather busy so students in these examples you see almost very and rather are words that tell us about the extent of an action so they are examples of adverbs of degree i hope students now you have no doubts regarding adverb and their kinds so students i am giving you a home assignment i hope you will do it with great care and sincerity find the adjective in the first sentence and fill in the blanks with the corresponding adverb mrs gupta is very careful she drives dash father is often hungry he runs dash joy is a good painter he paints dash he is an intelligent lawyer he argues his case dash this sum is easy you can do it dash i hope students you have no doubts regarding verbs adverbs adjectives and their kinds in next class we will learn about prepositions conjunctions and interjections thank you